The easiest way to get started with a form in Typeform is to use a template. To do that, you simply go to your workspace, and then here on the left where it says create new Typeform, click on that, and then you get two choices, start from scratch, which we'll do a little later, or use a template, which is what I want to show you right now. I'll click on that. And what it brings up is a gallery here on the left of possible templates. Now you can filter them by different use cases, so forms and payments, or by different categories, e-commerce, education, and so on. But right now, I want to just kind of scroll through this and show you what's available. All of these are live forms. If I just click on this one right here, you see we get a little template ID number here. I click on it, and then the form shows up on the right, and it's a live form, and I can start using it or I can see what some of the other ones are. And the important thing is we've got a lot of choices and you see that they look different. They have different colors, they have different fonts, they have different pictures, they have different layout. And hopefully as you scroll through these, you'll be able to find something that fits your vision of what would be most useful in your particular situation. Now, one important thing to keep in mind here is that some of these use features that are only available in the paid pro and pro plus accounts. That is, for instance, if they take money payments through the Stripe payment processing, or if they use skip logic, or if they're calculating scores, then those are special features. And you won't be able to use those, although you can use the templates, and you just have to remove that functionality. Now, it's pretty easy to tell you see, when I hover over these, I just see a number that identifies what it is. But if I come down here a little bit to, for instance, the cake order form, that says pro. And that's because it has a pro feature where it takes payments that you would need to have that account in order to be able to use that. The same thing is true of quizzes, which have scoring algorithms or maybe a certain kind of jump logic between the questions. Again, you can remove those particular features and still use the general template to get the colors and the feel. It's a great way of exploring what's possible. Now, I want to come up here just for a moment. I'm going to use one example. I'll use the job application form. I'm going to click on that. And then it opens up here on the right. And like I said, it's a live form. So I can just come over here and it says apply now, press enter. So I'll press enter. And then it's going to give me a little bit of information. It starts with a quote, it gives me more information about what they're looking for in their particular job. I'll press enter and say, that's me. It asks my name. I put Bart, my last name, Polson. I'll put, whoops, I'll put hello at data lab. I'll put my LinkedIn profile there. It's my company profile. Then I can start rating myself on various aspects. And you see, it's a really quick and easy way to go through. And you can see that there's a lot of variation in this. It's pleasing to look at. It's engaging to use. That's the major strength of type forms. Now, what's interesting about this is you can make changes. Right now, I'm just using a live copy of the template. If I actually want to use it for my own work, I come over here to this button that says use this template. I'll hit that. And then it's going to add a copy of the template to my workspace. You can't see that at the moment. But if we come up here, it is the name job application form. But what you're seeing here is sort of the skeletal structure of the form. You see the bits and pieces of information that you can put into it. Now what you have over here is different kinds of information that you can drag over to the right. And then we have these little icons to say what kind of answer it's looking for. We also have up here what's called a welcome screen. You see that's where that would come from right there. I'm going to click on that. And here's the welcome form. It's got an image, it's got some text, it's got a button, it's got a background. I can change these things. So for instance, if I don't want to use this image, I can come over here and I can throw it away. It asks me if I want to delete it. I'll say yes, we've got a big empty space there. I'll go to upload and I'll get one of my own images and open that. Okay, now it says data lab in really big letters. And we're looking for a great data person. And then I can change bits and pieces of this however I want. I'll hit save. 
and now I have a new welcome screen. Now I'm not going to modify any questions right here, except to say that this right here where it says answer, this is a way of referring to the question that's right above it. That's sort of an ID number for the question and to insert the person's first name there. And you see how we do that a few times. And then this here is called a question group. So we have a lead in question and then it asks for people to rate on several different things. And then we have other questions and you can have a thank you screen at the end if you want. So this is building and I'll show you more about that what the specific kinds of questions are and how you can relate them one to another. But let's also come here to design. Again, these are simply options that you have for working with particular templates. So one issue here is that I've got my red logo and the green background doesn't go really well with it. I can come to colors. And I can either choose an existing palette. Well, there's a different green, not really good. And I can bounce around and try different combinations. But what's happening is it's leaving the background text the same. So I'm going to hit colors. I'm going to come down here to background image. I'll click on that. And I'm going to just deactivate this background. So now the background's gone. That's what I wanted. I'll back up a little bit and I can pick a different font if I want. I might come down here a bit courier because it's nice and geeky. And those are some of the choices that I have. I'll hit apply to type form, which means save it to this particular document that I'm working on. It's been updated. The next step is to go to configure. Now with configure, this is where we get some of the really the settings or the details of it. Right now we're in general, I can call it a different form, I can call it my template. I can actually change it to being a private form. If I've paid money, I can remove the type form branding. I can also integrate it with a whole bunch of different other applications and services. I can then get notifications to myself whenever somebody fills it out. And this is kind of a cryptic form, but we'll talk more about that later. In certain situations, respondents can get notifications, you can have a progress widget. So it says you're 50% of the way through or you can say you've done five out of 10 questions, either one works. You have the option of changing messages. And that is what it says when it says continue, you can change what shows up in each of these buttons. And the webhooks gets very sophisticated, you're gonna to have to have the pro plus that's the top of the line version of Typeform to be able to integrate this kind of programming into what you're doing. So we'll ignore that one, excuse me. So we'll ignore that one for right now. Share is how you actually get the form out to people. Now, right now, I've got a URL for this form, and I can copy that and I can paste it around. Or I can just like go to Twitter. And so this is going to ask if I want to just send this out in a tweet and I could do that. I don't really want to right now. Or I could get some code that makes it possible to launch it in a web page. I can embed it in a few different forms. And so these are options and I'll show you how all of those work. And once your form has been out for a while, you're going to have some data and then you can get to analyze data. And again, this is all built in certain ways with the templates. And these are ways of making it very quick and easy to get up and running with Typeform. We have certain metrics on how many people visited them, how many questions they completed, you can get the results and download them in an Excel spreadsheet, which is gonna make it really easy to analyze them. Although you do have to do a little bit of cleaning up. If you have a Google Analytics ID, you can stick that right in here. And you can get information about the web visitors. And then finally, there are reports. These are sort of the built in information that Typeform gives you its own analysis. Now, I haven't sent this one out, I don't have any data. So we can't look at it here. But in later sections of this course, we'll get a really good view of what Typeform is able to offer you in the reports, and what you might want to do on your own. But I'm going to finish by just coming here to view my Typeform. And now we're going to get a full screen version of the form and it's ready to go. So I can hit enter and say, let's go. And you see it's the same information I've styled a little bit differently, I've changed a little bit of information. But this is a good way to get up and running really quickly 
by using the template in Typeform so you can get started gathering the data that you need for your own projects.